Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. As you all know, I talk about inflammation and how chronic inflammation is really driving uh, a great deal of the illnesses that we're seeing. And I'm talking about we got to lower inflammation, lower inflammation. And so there's kind of a way you can break down and where is that inflammation coming from that might be affecting your health. Okay. And so I just want to want to go over that. Um, now, one of the common things we talk about is the leaky gut. This is probably the biggest source of inflammation because if you do have leaky gut, now leaky gut is small intestine, materials leaking through the seams basically, and then the tissue that surrounds the small intestine is approximately 70% of all of your white blood cells. So inflammation normally is short-lived. You have a sinus infection or a sprained ankle and your white blood cells are activated and you release these chemicals called cytokines, they fix the problem and then they shut off. What happens with leaky gut, it tends to be chronic and all these other sources I'm gonna talk about, it's just kind of nonstop and that's really, really unhealthy for your body. So the leaky gut portion on this chart here, I've got it over here, it's two basic forms of leaky gut we're having to deal with these days. One is from SIBO, and that's in my little graphics where the you know the bacteria from the colon are living up in the small intestine. Now there we use rifaximin in adults uh, and inulin, and sometimes in adults, but inulin works really well in the kids. We're now discovering that COVID is causes uh, through a chain of events uh, its own form of leaky gut in the small intestine. Okay, and that we treat with at least six weeks of glutamine. with this amino acid over the counter, very, very effective, okay? So those are two of the major sources. Now, other things we talk about are the uh, dietary linoleic acid. These are the seed oils or palmitic acid. This is uh, these artificial saturated fats that you'll find in highly processed foods. These, these chemicals are highly, highly inflammatory, okay? Now, fortunately, the olive oil we recommend will protect you from that. Now, omega-3 fatty acids, okay? This is, think of fish oil or flax, okay? We don't have enough in our food supply. So people are taking extra fish oil. That's really important. To some degree, excessive calorie carbohydrate intakes will fuel inflammation and uh, uh, ALE or AGE intake. These are molecules that are produced when you have the processed foods in particular. They're cooked at these really high and dry temperatures. Okay. And so you can see here to deal with this uh, supplement with ALA, that's like flax oil, EPA, DHA, fish oil, oleic acid, that's in your olive oil. Low temperature cooking, maybe intermittent fasting will help with all of this. So that's the basic thing we talk about. But some people have other things. You can have an injury to your autonomic nervous system, and in particular, the parasympathetic branch. It's the primary controlling regulator, regulator for inflammation for the entire body. Now that injury could be from a, a concussion type or emotional injury that you sustained or a COVID injury that you sustained and you didn't recover from. Uh, and in that case, that's where we use the vagus nerve simulator in particular to try to augment this natural um, anti-inflammatory signal from the brain. So that's what the VNS does is you, you trigger the nerve and the nerve naturally tells the body to calm down. You basically from an inflammatory standpoint, it's a very effective. Then there's other uh, sources of uh, illnesses, like uh, mainly uh, autoimmune disorders, but there's some other chronic lung disorders, silicosis or asbestosis. Those are pretty unusual. But if you have like rheumatoid arthritis or some other autoimmune disorder, they could be adding into the pot of your inflammatory uh, cytokines. And then obesity, excess body fat. Body fat makes lots of inflammatory cytokines, okay? And so we've seen with these GLP-1 inhibitors, like Ozempic, um, uh, those drugs are helping people to uh, their appetite and whatnot. They're reducing body fat a lot. And in that they're showing dramatic improvements in blood pressure, heart function, kidney function, all sorts of stuff. 
by just reducing the inflammation. So you all of these things add together to give you this kind of total, this pool of inflammatory chemicals that can affect your whole body. Now these chemicals can also though flow into the brain and affect your brain, okay? And so we have all these sources that are being made outside of the brain and they can flow in to the brain. And that makes it so that your brain can't recover from injury and it also starts disrupting uh, things in the brain like uh, rejuvenation of neurons and things of that sort. So here's kind of just a way I personally, when I'm dealing with patients, I'm thinking about these different categories. Do they have any of these kind of things? And uh, you know, how do I go about in uh, lowering inflammation? So I hope that gives you a little framework for um, how to think about this. Uh, remember, hit the subscribe button if you want more of uh, kind of my little uh, talks here. And then if you're interested, you know, you can click. We've got you know our fish oil and olive oil products, our vagal stimulator uh, products available if you want to try those too. Other than that, everybody have a great day. Thank you.